Many in the scholarly and political field praise Jeremy Rifkin for the willingness to think big, raise controversial questions, and serve as a social and ethical prophet. We're on the cusp of a third industrial revolution. We're going to begin to understand the mission of this new communication revolution that we financed in the 1990s. It's going to converge with a new energy regime, hydrogen. You're going to get your fuel cell, and your fuel cell is analogous to a personal computer. In a personal computer, you generate your own content, then you connect it back to the grid, and you share it with a billion people. Your fuel cell is analogous to a personal computer, so that when you generate your electricity in your industrial park, your office, your factory, your home, you'll use the electricity, but the surplus you don't need, you're going to send it back to the grid. But the grid's going to have to be decentralized, so they're smart, just like the World Wide Web. That means when you generate electricity, thousands and millions of people in your automobiles, your industrial parks, your homes, you're going to be able to connect so that you can send that electricity peer-to-peer -peer like information. The coming together of the decentralized communication revolution of the 1990s and decentralized distributive generation of hydrogen, you become the power plant. That combination, that convergence, is the third industrial revolution. The coming together of decentralized communication and hydrogen energy will be as powerful as the coming together of the telegraph, the telephone, the internal combustion engine and oil, second industrial revolution, multiplier effect, the entire 20th century. This is the cusp. This is the opportunity. This is the challenge. The hydrogen economy debate is just one of many that Jeremy Rifkin has made headlines with. From the economy to the environment, from the workforce to genetic commerce, Mr. Rifkin has spent the last 35 years raising the big questions of our time. A fellow at the famed Wharton School Executive Education Program, Mr. Rifkin lectures on future trends in science, technology, and the global economy. He is the best-selling author of 17 books on the impact of technological and economic change on society, culture, and the environment. His books have been translated into more than 30 languages and are used by universities, corporations, and government agencies around the world. Mr. Rifkin's global commentary appears frequently in the LA Times, Chicago Tribune, and the Washington Post. He is a columnist for many of the leading newspapers around the world, including The Guardian in the UK, Süddeutsche Zeitung in Germany, El País in Spain, La Soir in Belgium, and Claren in Argentina. With his unique perspective and social commentary, Jeremy Rifkin is a frequent guest on numerous television programs, including Face the Nation, CNN's Crossfire, Nightline, 2020, Larry King Live, and The Today Show. An advisor to heads of state, Fortune 500 companies, and civil society organizations all over the globe, Jeremy Rifkin clearly articulates the enormous challenges we all share as we look to the future. In his groundbreaking international bestseller, The Hydrogen Economy, Rifkin takes us on an eye-opening journey into the next great commercial era in history. He envisions the dawn of a new economy powered by hydrogen that will fundamentally change the nature of our market political and social institutions just as coal and steam power did at the beginning of the industrial age. The hydrogen economy. There is a new energy regime right here in front of us. Right on the horizon. It's here. Ready for us. Hydrogen is the basic element of the universe. It's the lightest element in existence. It never runs out. It's the stuff of the stars. And when we power using hydrogen, there's only two byproducts. Pure water, so pure you can drink it, and heat. No CO2. Global warming's the dark side of our existing energy era. It's the entropy bill come due for 200 years of fossil fuel use. We may be seeing a temperature rise of somewhere between two and a half and ten and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the 21st century. And the reports projected that as we build the CO2, the temperature range changes and we're going to have more droughts, we're seeing it. More wildfires, we're seeing it. 
more coastal damage from severe hurricanes, we're seeing it. We have a second problem. The conventional wisdom is that we have about 34 years left of crude oil till we reach peak. Peak is a petrogeology term. Peak is when half your global reserves of oil, either no, known and yet to be discovered, are used up. Your prices never go down again. It's the top of the bell curve. The optimists say we'll peak in 2030s. The pessimists say we'll peak between 2010 and 2020. Do we really care about a 20-year difference? In geopolitical terms and even market terms, it's irrelevant. What this means is the investment community across this country, you need to become entrepreneurial cartographers. We create a roadmap to a renewable hydrogen future. We've got to get beyond oil. So by getting on the map toward a hydrogen future, we radically reduce global warming. We narrow the divide between the haves and have-nots. We close that debt gap. We give everyone a shot at equal access to universal electricity so we can have deep reglobalization from the bottom up. Instead of holding your breath about oil prices for 40 years, we have a new story. We build a new infrastructure. We create a new legacy. This will be the finest contribution you can make to future generations. This will be your moment on your watch to make the 21st century a better century. In his international bestseller, The European Dream, How Europe's Vision of the Future is Quietly Eclipsing the American Dream, Mr. Rifkin argues that while the great American dream is fading, a nascent European dream is beginning to capture the attention and imagination of the world. The emerging European dream, says Rifkin, is in many respects the mirror opposite of the American dream, but may be better suited to meet the challenges of a globalizing society in the 21st century. The European Dream. Our family was raised on the American Dream. Catechism. Morning, noon, and night. And that dream, stripped to its essentials, is basically this. Regardless of the station to which you're born, if you work hard, get a good education, if you're diligent to the task, you can make a success out of your life in the United States of America. It's a land of opportunity. That dream was robust for the first two centuries of this country's existence. Even in 1960, recall, we were the most middle-class society in the whole world 40 years ago. Unfortunately, in those last 40 years, that American dream has begun to unravel.